Hello, my name is Conrad Lam. I'm Cambodian. Um, I've been living in the United States for the last 32 years. I was born in Cambodia, Phnom Penh, in 1972, before the country, uh, the country collapsed, the communists took over. So during the communists took over, my family and I, I have one brother and one sister, mom and, and father. We live in Phnom Penh and the communists evacuated us from the city to the jungle. My father was a chemist, for working as a chemist. My mom also university graduate before the country collapsed. So when they evacuated my family and many other Cambodians to the jungles, on the way a lot of people kill, die, starvation. And then in the village, uh, 100 members of family that very educated. <coughs> By the end of after three years, only three family left. All of them was executed and, and killed. Along, my young brother was only two years old, and he was sick. And my mom took him to the communist doctor, and then they inject coconut milk to his body, and then he become paralyzed and died after 52 days without doctor, without any medicine, because in the jungle. My mom died, my dad died. We lost almost 200 members of our family. They torture them so bad. <clears throat> and then uh, no food to eat. My family and I was a wife because we ate frog and mice and lizard and then uh, leaf and root to survive. I was a city girl and I work and I'm not fast enough like those farmer girls. They put me in a, a, a ant nets so it beat you a lot. Yeah, the red ant. Yeah. After during 1979, the, con the communist collapsed. The, the Vietnamese took over. My father stayed there, and then the same thing. And then we feel if we stay in Cambodia, maybe the future is not good for myself and my sister. So we decide to escape from Cambodia to Thailand because my father listened to Asian Ameri uh, radio. Free Asia, it's American radio. They said if you are former governor, government worker, they are accepting your application in the refugee camp as long as you have all that proof. And my father kept because that is his life. <laughs> he, he kept all that document. And then we escaped. During my escape from Cambodia to Thailand, we have to disguise ourselves that we are not the same family and we would stay in the mud and in the outside to make our skin is very dark. <laughs> and then my mom, my father decided to escape first uh, that day and then he escaped, it was a rainy day and then he made it to each parole, it was a heavy rain and then they did not come to check my father during the parole. And then they found out, the, the spy, they found out that my father escaped, they, they told us that by the sunset, they will bring my father head back. Cry and cry, and then like a two week later, my my I have re, we have received a letter from my father that he make it to the one of the camp refugee camp. So please send the, your the daughter, my sister and I, which was like eleven or twelve years old at that time. Uh, my mom high smuggler, like six seven smuggler like around $500 US dollar and then her gold band gold band wedding ring the gold band and then she cut in hair she she stretch it and then she saw on my dress like here so the robbery or the smuggler would not know where I hide my it's just only like a seven or eight gram of the gold not a lot but at least there's something for me to, if I, somebody capture me or do something, I just pull out and then just give them them so they release us, not to capture us. And I, I escaped three days, two nights in a jungle with my sister and a smuggler. And then during the escape, there was in the jungle, there was no water, no food. And then the one in the jungle at night time we escape, I can smell the, the dead body, I, the bookie trap. And at one point we escaped, I almost sit into 
an explosive mind and yeah and I was like uh, if I put my hand down I the whole group that escaped will be dead during the escape I kept thinking oh I will have a good life if I make it oh I will have good food to eat if I make it if I have good education if I make it one more step it feel like one more mile because you're so exhausted and we were the small kid among the escape so they keep stepping on us stepping on us and then and I grab onto one of the sparklers and who is next his shirt you cannot leave me in the jungle you took my mom money <laughs> you cannot you have to you cannot let me stay here you have to help my, my my sister and I and I just call out my sister and then hold on to him so two of them did not let me and then during the escape in the jungle you cannot wear shoes because if you wear shoes and muddy, it's not fast enough, so it has to be barefoot. And then my father, he told me that uh, before I came in like two or three days, he kept having a dream. Go pick up your daughter and uh, we're at the border where people escape and then get to the camp, you know. There's a, a, a camp, refugee camp, and then people just escape out and then just ran in the camp. Keep going and he said he had dreamed like two three nights in a row so he kept waiting for us in the, the border but they could not did not see and then that time uh, and then the, for the last day he came back and he sat down in the camp and then i came running to him and he said well, it was the best present he ever had that time because we are united at least my sister and i make it to the one of the refugee camp and now my mom left she still have to escape, make a big escape to meet us again. She escaped, she, she bicycle from country to country and she find food for us and she's like very strong lady. So after my mom reunite and then we have to find another smuggler, escape to Thai, uh, Khao Dang camp. And that was very hard too because my mom doesn't know the territory, never been in the the camp and then we have to hire smuggler to take us to the camp so during the escape we gave them a smuggler like uh, almost thousand dollars and during the escape we cannot talk we have to whisper we have to wear black we have to crawl you know across the mountain you cannot walk you crawl like this your knees and your leg and then put your belonging you don't have any belonging only water and a little food on your neck and then you crawl. They don't want people to get into the refugee camp. If they saw, they will shoot you down. Thousand or thousand Cambodian died during that 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 uh, crossing line. The three bar wire very very high. They cut the bar wire so we can sneak in. And they pull and open. And then the next morning we take we wash ourselves and then we headed to the headquarters to, to get the, the, the camp leader to know that we are here as a refugee. So my father, he applied to many different countries. He applied to France, to Australia, to Canada, to Japan, everywhere with his, uh, with his document. And then lucky, United States accept us before everybody else. And I was so happy that uh, I feel like, oh, my bone is like flying, you know? It's a golden bone, you know? It's, people have to be chosen to come into the United States, not just everybody can make it. And after six months, my mom and my dad passed the, the study, and we come to the United States directly to St. Paul, 1983, November 7. And we never forget that day. Every year until now, it's our freedom we celebrate every time on uh, November 7. Yeah. Cheng Heng is uh, my husband's name, and Lucky Heng is Lucky. Cheng is my, my husband's name and my mother's name also. And Heng is Lucky. Even you step on a bad thing, you're always lucky. <laughs> I don't know it's true or not, but that's what it, it, it say like that. Uh, that. That's what it means. Cheng Heng is always lucky. Yeah, very lucky. It was time. hard the first time, and it was hard for the first Cambodian uh, restaurant. And who know about Cambodian food? 
it was hard to describe, oh, this is good, this is this, ah, this, try my food, you know, like when you see customers, you feel like you want to carry them from the outside to come in <laughs> from the beginning because you, they don't know about, they know about Thai, Vietnam, Chinese food, but Cambodian, no, hesitate to try. But when they try, they keep coming back, they keep bringing friends, multiply every day, every day, it makes you so happy. And the newspaper, Pioneer Press help us a lot too. Yeah, by, uh, I'm, I'm really appreciate life in here. I don't take it for granted. I appreciate every single day. <laughs> When I first opened, I feel there's a people in the refugee camp that sent back home from the camp that I used to live at, Khao Dang camp, the Thailand camp. When they close out, they sent back Cambodian refugee to, Tha to Cambodia. And those people got discriminated with their own people because you are a traitor. You get out and now you come back and they don't have place to stay or they put in a very desert and then no school for children. So I heard about that. I feel I am Cambodian. I need help. I need to help my people, my refugee people. So I raise money, tip money that I have and with along with customer uh, helping too. And I built first school in 19, 19, 2005. If I can donate a little bit, help out, maybe the future is more brighter, more better than what they used to be. So I built the one school and named after my daughter, Sarah Lam. It's called Van Hain Sarah Lam. So I, I built one school for that, first school. And then to 2007, I built a second school there with the help of the tip money and the customer help. And then the school I built is funded by the, the teacher is paid by government, and then we just build the school. We always stay in St. Paul. Yeah, always have never moved to anybody else. Always in this St. Paul. I maintain my old culture, my moral, that I, I still practice Buddhist. That's the most important, my religion. That's the freedom religion I have in the United States. That's the most important. I do miss home. Whenever I go, I do miss home because that's where your culture, your language is. And you feel belong to because of the language. In here, you feel safe. You belong to here too. Many 30 years later, you feel safe, but not the same as home. That the real food, the real vegetable that you eat, uh, the, the, the temple that you go, it, it's like home, 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 like something missing. When you go there, you feel complete. Yeah, you come here, you're lucky. Don't take it for granted, you're very lucky to be here. Mm -hmm. mm, work very, very hard, you know, try very, very hard to, in order to get here, not easy. Not just uh, get on a plan, come to I said no, for us 30 years ago, no. We went through so many things in order to have our life this, this way. And then, not easy. People come easy, maybe they don't appreciate. For, for me, I do appreciate so much. Because not just one day you make it to this, I have step by step, step by step in order to make it this far. Yeah. <laughs>